So, Pasha Shlach, Rabbi say. Okay. Okay, this is... Shkoyah. Rashi, Pasha Seinu. In Rashi's Pirush on our Pasha, B'negeel and Meraglam, regarding the Meraglam. Metzina, we find Stilis, B'negeel and Matzav, and Be'eshi Luchem, we find contradictions regarding what type of character they had at the time that they were sent out. Mm-hmm. In the beginning of the parasha, the words, they were all anoshim. What was the, what's the stress of it? They were all men. In Fadish Rashi, at that time, they were kosher. They were good people. So it seems when they get sent out, they were good people. Abu Baham Sheikha. Later on in the parasha, the Posik, the Yikram Vaisha Shia bin Yeshua. Then Sukim later, it says that Moshe gave a new name to Heshea, his Talmud. Heshea Benun now became called Yeheshua Benun. Why did Moshe change his name before he went on, on the mission? Peter Shashi explains his spalal all of Kosh Yeshiach Meatasparagam. He davened on him. You, Hashem Davin and Yeshaya, Hashem should Moshe, save you. Moshe Davin for Yeshua. Moshe for Hashem should save you from the advice of the Meraglim. Isn't it rare to, to change your name because to change your name has to come if somebody is sick or something? Correct. It's very rare. Correct. Correct. And he gave him a Yud, and now he had in the beginning of his name the name of Hashem. Yud and the He, the name of Hashem, and the word. Uh, Shua. Shua is means sal- salvation from the word Yeshua. Kash Hashem should save you. So what happened to Kalev? So over what here it seems. It's a good question. This is my first to discuss. What about Kalev? What about the Adam Hagim? If Moshe Rabbeinu already know, give him a given name and, and, and help him to do. It's a here we here. Protects you. Onto Yeshua. <laughs> so it seems in Mizem Mashma over here. Shekar Oz Higish Moshe the Shas Hashem Adam Moshe already. I uh, realize that the 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 the, the, the Maraglim have wicked plans. Later on, another temp sukim later, it says they came back. They went and they came. Mm-hmm. The Torah writes they came and they went together. The same pasuk thing. Went and they came. To compare the two, they're leaving and they're coming. Just like they're coming back was a bit bad advice, they left with bad advice. So again, it seems to be they left with bad advice. On the other hand, earlier Rashi said, <laughs> They were kosher at that time. So were they kosher? They were not kosher. So we have a time element. At one point, it could be kosher, and then as the time goes on, the day or something. Maybe four or hours. Mm-hmm. No, thank you. Could have thank you. to have sure. right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What you're bringing up is an explanation which a number of the Gedolei Lehem Bafarshim say. So right now the Rebbe is going to bring up. The Yishev Astira to answer this contradiction. To answer the contradiction for this pasuk, we have three psukim here. First pasuk is Kulam Anoshim Oyse Shok Shirim Hayu. That time they were kosher. Another pasuk were Moshe Ben Davin for Yeshua. And the third pasuk by Yelcho Yevayu. They went and they came, just like they they came back with a bad eight. So they left with a bad eight. So on this last pasuk that they came and they went with a bad eight, a bad advice. I the Mefarshim ask. We said originally that they were kosher when they left. Karbira Mafarshim, the Farshim explains Shazel the UK shall rashi lift and they have an oysa shock shame. That's a rashi wrote in the beginning of the parsha. Oysa shock shame. At that time they were kosher, not the whole time they were kosher. The rak the shash and if from the smanuk shame, just right at the time that they were appointed, they were kosher people. Now Fuki this comes to school the after Isa Shah after that period of time is Shahik by Derek. As soon as they started to go out on their journey. Before they even got to Eretz Canaan, before they went, and they started, they went, set out. See? As they were setting out by Yehuchu, they changed. Nebuchadnezzar and became Hashem. That's what Farshim explained. So that explains to us the contradiction between the third pasuk and the f- first pasuk. Third pasuk, they went and they came. Yes, they they went. They went as Rishayim. 
Ah, it says in the first Pasik, in the beginning of the Pasha, oh, it's a yes, at that time they were cushioned their pointed, but when they actually went out, they already went out with the bad intentions. We have an issue, we still have the middle Pasik. The second sure. Pasik, which says, Hashemayisha davened for Yeshua, seems to be there was this a little bit later, he davened for Yeshua. Havel ein zem the bottom line in the right column, this doesn't help explain Rashi's interpretation that Moshe davened for his Talmud Yeshua. That was before they that was before they left. He had to daven for him and change his name. He called him in and he gave him a new name before he left. So already before they left, there was an issue. Now, now if, if Moshe knew in advance that there's something not, not so kosher about him, why did he send him in the first place? Excellent. Right. Very good question. So and now... And he should have chose some other people. Very good. So other Mepharshim say, other Mepharshim say that, you know what? This is... It was already... It earlier started. The, the beginning Mepharshim say when they went on the... On the on, they started leaving, they became a shame. Good, that helps us for that pasuk. That when they went, they were shayim. When they were appointed, they were shayim. But we have a problem that that yeah, sure. already before they left, Moshe is already concerned and he's davening for Yeshua before they left. Wow. So other Farsh explain in Chanami. Even before they left, they already changed. While they were still there, they already changed. Yesh Mefarshim, Shemiyad Achashuv. That right after they were appointed, Kfar Lo Already they turned sour. Obiru, they explained the betchilak shuvak shem how you would see the Moshe shlichas al pi Hashem liris haaret kaser ayis on the yichel kavish. Moshe commanded them how to on the shlichas to go see the land. What's the easiest way to conquer? it? The nitznis bahem itzahar and itzahar came into them. The chazal Moshe they came back to Moshe lim silem saman abaretz. They asked, give us signs, show us what way we're going to be able to figure out how powerful they are. Teach us the methods. Im toivim ra is a good. How is it a good land or bad land? This ha'am ha'chazuku ha'rafa ha'krochim and mitzarim. But here Gishmoish and Moshe felt with that shekavanos ra that they have bad intentions. The malam ilach yisim mashen savi. You were told to go. You know why are you coming back with all these questions? Moshe didn't like all these questions. Lecha kasev yikam Moshe Yeshua kishehir gish behem yitzam haraes falishu when he felt in them. And the Yitzhahara came into them, See? so he ran away down for them. So we have two answers, basically timeline. Timing it earlier and earlier. So typically we understand that when they became a, a, a the Shoyim was a... Uh, was was a... Uh, the the Sicha. Rabbi 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 so we, the the issue we pashtas we always learn that the maraglim uh, became bad when they went on a trip. So one step is to explain that no, they already became bad when, as soon as they left. We have an issue that Moshe davened for Yeshua seems to be already before they left. Already Moshe was concerned. So we have to move the timeline earlier that somehow right after they were appointed, the Yitzhara came to them already. They became issues. I think what he asked why Dafka Yeshua he davened for him. He was layamush. And now, I'm, I'm from his tent, he was there all the time. So he was very close to him. He has to daven for him. If he knows something wrong going to be with the Meraglim, he has to daven for his abbot. I would do the same thing. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Daven for all of them. But he, he saw maybe uh, all of them were not help. Only with him. This is why I changed When they name. came to Moshe Rabbeinu, right there, right? Moshe appointed them. Then they came and asked questions about this. From the question, Moshe Rabbeinu said something is wrong. Yeshua didn't ask this question. They asked, not Yeshua. Uh, before so they left. You, before they left. So Lamaisa, however, Lapoyal, we have difficulties over here. Um, one thing was brought up before, and you know, we, we a few nakodas that we still need to understand. From the bottom of the left column, page seventy-eight. Our Peter Zet Sarich Iun. This. Hirush that right at, immediately after they were appointed, they suddenly turned sour. You have a few issues with this. Number one, Aleph, Kasha B'yoyser Loyma. It's very difficult to say 
Shakavanas Rashi, top of page 79, and Mashakas of Oisishak, Shalem Hayu, Hirak was man Katsubi. So it's difficult to say that when the Pasuk Rashi explains at that time they were good, which is such a short period of time. Like Rashi meant to say just a very limited amount of time they were kosher. Even while they were still veer, before they, before they left already, it was already went bad. Yeah. It's difficult. Mishas haminu yad shechol z'mayish yunsem z'manim be'aretz. From after they're appointed, already when Moshe is already when they come back to Moshe to ask for signs, already things went bad. What is that? That's from uh, Medrash. Yeah, all of them in Rashi, Baba Emes, they all come from Medrashim and, and, and Chazals. Beis, another issue. Le Pirushim have a lemeim al Rashi have a little Rashi. Beis hamlusim kshed loymer beis hamlusim kshed loymer. Rashi should be a little more clear according to the Pirush. Not Oisik Shah that time period. When they were appointed, they were mm-hmm. they were good. But right after they were appointed, things went wrong. Somehow the Yitzhahara came to them. Well, he saw, because according to his Mepharshim, that he saw from all the questions they were asking that something was going the haywire. Question. Sometimes a teacher in the class has a student, and he, he asks a question. The teacher listens to the question and said, this kid is not in my class. He doesn't know what's going on over here. He's not listening. By, by telling him, go to the soil, and the right away come and says, and... What happened? Hey, 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 one second, something is wrong. Well, how all of them came with one etzah that uh, they all came together? It's a rara. When all but of all them together. Shot. Yep. Nice asata. Anyways, Gimel. Gimel. And the hey. third most important question. The Iker. The main question which was asked here before him. Here Gish Moshe. Moshe felt. Shekavanosim l'ra. That indeed the Meraglan intention were bad before they left. And that's why he was davening for his Talmud Yeshua. Why didn't Moshe stop the whole situation? He knew they're having bad intentions, according to these Mepharshim. So, so stop, don't send them. <laughs> Go home. Get another one. <laughs> Can't take it a free choice, but he, he, Moshe had the power, like you say, Moshe was able to stop them. He chose them. Choose, what are we going to say? All the clients want bad? The, the no. final, it's a dikim. So if he knew there was something wrong, that's really the real issue. If we knew there was an issue before they left. Mm-hmm. So we really have to understand this. Let's skip the brackets. The Siv base. Page 79, the left column. Siv base. We can backtrack for a minute. Bichlal, forget about Moshe realizing that there was bad intentions here and still he only sent them. We have a similar issue with the entire sending of Maraglim. The whole spies, it wasn't so clear that Hashem wanted the spies to be sent out. There was an issue here at the very beginning before we talk about the specific spies and what their intentions. The very fact that he didn't want to send spies, there was an issue over here. We can ask a general, a, a similar question. A klolus in Yishlach Maragim. The general concept of sending a Maragim. Shall appear to Shashi that based on Rashi, this is all Rashi. Kravas cholas hadaver yodam by sheni in Yerotzi. Mekom lekin mishalach. Moshe already realized in the beginning that the concept of sending out spies wasn't desirable, and still he did it. Dehine, al aposik shlach lecha noshim. Rashi explains what's this word shlach lecha. Shlach noshim send out. Shlach lecha, you can send out. Rashi brings down from Chazal. Shlach lecha ledaitcha, you can send. It's on your own, on your own, your own, on your own accord. Ani eini mitzavaloch, im tirtishlach. I'm not telling you to send. If you want, you could send. Shabo Yisrael for Yidden came. Rama they said nishlach anoshel v'neinu. Let's send Baraglim before us. Amar Kadosh Baruch Ani emaritim shiaretz tisal teva. I told them it's a good land. And now they, they, they're questioning it. They want to send spies. Well, they don't trust me. by their lies. I'm going to give them an irrit room to make a mistake in the words of Maraglim in order that they should not inherit the land. Hashem was upset. You don't have that amuna. Shlema, I told you it's a good land. You ready? You ready? Want, you don't trust me already? From this it comes out. Moshe heard clearly from Hashem. There's no need for sending the Barak. There's no need. I know. I, can, we, I know what to do with the Barak, with the land. I can deal with the the, the Malchik I created them. 
I can deal with them. I'm telling you it's good, you're gonna conquer. It's not Moshe still said, I'm gonna follow with what the Eden wanted. So it's funny, what's happening here? He knows it's an issue, but he agrees. In Pasha's Dvarim, when Moshe repeats the Torah and it talks over what happened in the past, and he talks over the story of the Maraglim, he re- reminds Klai Yisrael what happened with the Maraglim. Moshe, over explains that Moshe said, I thought the idea of Maraglim was a good idea, because I understood that it wasn't coming from a good place. But I thought if you would see that I agree to, yeah, you want to send spies, send spies, whatever you want. When you see that I'm agreeing and I'm, and I'm not nervous about it, and I have no issues with it, then you'll, you'll say, okay, we realize Moish is really serious, it's taka real, and you're going to give up on the idea. Okay, Moshe, so maybe... Oh, it was a strategy, I mean, to get them yeah. to go. Right. I mean, they would Kama- they wanted him to go. Moshe has a thinking of a way. Kamashal Moshe, like a mashal, Rashi brings her a mashal, a parable. May Adam ha'omer la'chaveri. Someone who sends to his friend, a fellow, mecharli chamar chazeh. Sell me your donkey. Amalehein. Good. I, I'm ready. No, he's not in the sun. You give it to me for a test. Amalehein. Yeah. Kibun shirosh, and he kept on asking questions. Can I do this with it? Can I do that with it? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. When the person saw he was answering confidently and everything, okay. the buyer says that it's in his heart, but to that this person is sure of himself, I'm not going to find any, any problems with this donkey. Right away he said, Tell me, I take your money, and I say, I don't need to test it out. You see that the, the, the seller is talking in a certain manner, he's confident. I don't have to waste my time. Right. Ahead, yeah, we see clearly, page 80. Even though Moshe felt that the Kavana Bnei Yisrael was not for the best. Um, at the ending of the parentheses. Still, Moshe agreed with the Bakash of Yisrael. So now, what do we see from here? We see that Moshe realized there was an issue with the general concept of Maragam before even appointing specific people. And still in all, he went along with it. He agreed. Now, for whatever reason he did it, he did it. So, we could say something similar over here. By the, Marag- by, by the, by the actual pointing of the Maragam, even though Moshe saw there was an issue at hand, Moshe said, still in all, whatever the reason will be, that Moshe allowed the whole entire, this whole idea of the Mraglim to pass by, which we don't understand why he did it, so whatever the reason might be, the same thing here. Moshe saw that there was an issue here that he pointed to Mraglim, and he sees they have bad intentions already. Moshe is still going along with it. It seems to be some type of theme over here. So maybe we could just connect the two, and just like, whatever the reason will be there, will be here, and we don't really understand this issue. It's something a little beyond us. Does it ever know? Before we go, let's read this. The Kiva Shakapanam on a Royin, first paragraph in 80. Shaoid Lifne Zalinim and Mashal Khamid Shamshi. For whatever reason, Moshe did not refrain from sending off the, the, the Miragul. Ashullah Hoysa Kavanasa Lotoiva, even though we see that Kalal Yisrael's intentions weren't for the good. In Kay Shuve, Lisha Gamanidan, Lami Iku Shidduch Miragul, Ash Higish Moshe Kavanasa. So also, we don't have to, we don't need to ask. We shouldn't ask, be bothered the fact that Moshe is now sending the Maraglim, even though we don't know, even though the bad intentions. But Moshe in general, this whole thing, we have no idea what's going on. Why is Moshe sending them? The whole thing seems to be bad. A bad idea. Abiyev Shalemik, and we cannot tie the two together. Kichilat Godel Bedover, there is a great differentiation between the two. What's the two? Between the, the, the fact that Moshe's uneasiness, Moshe's realization that there was an issue with the general concept of sending out the Maragla, and still somehow Moshe agreed to it, whatever reason he agreed to this, which didn't make sense, why should he agree to this? Maybe it's all going to the and the market. second idea what we see, when he actually pointed specific people, and then they're going sour before they left, and Moshe's still sending them. Once, he, once he's testing out the donkey, he can't pull back. It's done. <coughs> oh. to that motion. Oh. 
if you if you go exactly with that muscle, it's too late. Now the, now the guy's just. Oh. Well, you should, it's still different. In the first case, in the first situation, like we saw in the muscle, good. So they 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 they, they still they, they want to test it out. But what what doesn't mean is anything bad going to happen? Kali says we want to send a raglan. We, we don't have the full amuna. So Moshe is telling them, don't worry, we can send a raglan. Whatever you want, we'll do for you. you Kali still didn't back down. Okay, you're right. Kali says not. They they want to send. But why should Moshe think something's bad going to happen with the sending? The actual descending should be good. Faye the Seder. You, you, you really want to send? Okay, send. But everything's going to be fine. So, we don't, we don't really have an issue with the general concept that Moshe allowed it to go. There's nothing wrong with him allowing the Ragnar to go. Why should they come back? They were tzaddikim. Why should Moshe be concerned? The problem is the second stage is a problem. Where Moshe already sees that's not just that they want to send out the Ragnar and see what's going to be. The ready, the people that he's sending out already have bad intentions. There's no hope. There's no hope it's going to come back a good report. There's no hope it's coming back a report, a good report. The mission is doomed. They could, they could overcome the answer. But the odds are, are, are well, against. We don't. Ain't same Why go into a Can't rely on us. Was it to build up their amuna, the Jewish nation, to build them up? They had to go down and they come up. Does you it know, have anything to do with it or not? I mean, the first case, we see they didn't have enough amuna. So they wanted to physically see it with their own eyes. Mm-hmm. That they ha- I want to hear from people that are going to come and tell them, not only from Hashem up there, from people down here are going to tell them. Okay, so Moshe said, they're not ready for it. Send the raglan. The raglan will come back. We'll tell them, what Hashem, and we'll, t- we'll give the report like Hashem said, <coughs> and everything will be good. So really, even though Moshe didn't like the fact that they didn't have the full amuna, but what's the problem with sending Baragam? There's no issue with sending Baragam. That's the only way to get them on board. Fine, send the Baragam. The problem is, how did Moshe agree once he saw the Baragam, these people he picked were already bad, and the mission was doomed for failure? Then why did he go further with it? He put him back out from his promise. He said he's going to send the Promise? I got another problem. About he doesn't Moshe. say he promised. Huh? I have another problem with Moshe. Moshe, before... Hashem tell him, Lech red ki shechet amecha. It's your people, the Erev Rab that you took. He already know that he has this kind of problem. That the people that he pick up with problems, so he has to be more easy with that. Good, but these he were, he, he hand-picked hand hand pick, hand the top. I wanted to tell you, you know, Parshas Vayera, we read the, the Haftarah, we read about the story of... Uh, story of the child uh, Elisha, Elisha mm-hmm. promised uh, Isha Shanamis a, a child, you know, because she used to always do Achnasus Archim and she made a special uh, uh, place in the attic a room for Elisha, whenever he would come to town he could stay there, her and her husband and Elisha at one point came and he asked his Meshamash Gechazi his, his, his Gabai to ask uh, her what it, maybe there's something that he could do for her maybe I could speak to the governor for her the king, you know, maybe she needs something. Do a toy with her. She's doing such nice things for me. So Lamai, she said she doesn't need anything. The game he said that they don't have any children. Blessed with a child. And Lamai, she had the, the child. Uh, she had a child. But later on, the child was older, and the child was outside the field, and the child one day grabbed his head and said, say, Reishi, Reishi, my head, my head. And he, and he, 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 she brought him to the house, put him into the attic on the bed, and he was, he was nifter. A mice, she, right, they ran off to go to the donkeys, to, to go on the donkey, and to go to Elisha. So the husband didn't say, why is she going to Elisha now? The concept of going to the tzaddik, the navi, he didn't make the, where are you going? It's not Shabbos today, it's not Yom Tif, where are you going? So she said, uh, so she said, uh, Shalom, goodbye. She didn't have any time to discuss. She has to run. Then she continues on the whole story, how she came to Elisha, and then Elisha came, said Gechazi, and Gechazi didn't manage to revive him because he didn't listen to what Elisha said. And Elisha yeah, came, revived Elisha did the uh, miraculous CPR over there, and uh, <laughs> the child is the Maisa. So, very interesting. The, the Sfardim and Ashkenazim have a difference of how they read the Haftarah. The Sfardim, they stop in the Haftarah, smack in the middle of the story. The story says, she told her husband, her husband said, what are you going to the Navi? It's not Rishchayim, not Shabbat, where are you going? She says, 
Shalom, goodbye, and she goes. That's where they stop. In the middle of the story, you don't get to hear the ending. Okay, technically, api alacha, you read the 21 pesukim. Of, you, you have to be at least 21 pesukim in the after. Well, good, so you read the 21 pesukim. No, but smack it on the story, it's a little bit funny. The Ashkenazim, they read till the end. So the Velt says, that the, the people say, uh, an old Vart, they say like this, that the Svardim, they have a Muna. Svardim, as soon as they, the, 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 she says she's going to the Navi, there's no need, we know it's going to be a good ending. Everything's going to be good. The Ashkenazim, you know, uh, we have to hear the ending of the story. We have to read it till the very end. It's not, they even said that they're not ready, they're not ready to go on, to believe, to believe, they need to hear it, they need to see with their own eyes, they need to send spies to Kafan. Okay, so Maisha said, you know what? You need to hear the ending of the night, you want to see it yourself, how Kalm can send it. But there's nothing wrong with that so far. So far, it's okay, they, they have a minute, everything's going to go good. The problem is the second epi- uh, stage, where we know that they're already having evil ten. and Maisha's already davening for Yeshua. He's changing his name, like you point out, it's a very abnormal situation here. Changing names, davening for his Talmud. You know, Maisha can just say, Boom, finished. We're not sending the miraculum. We're picking new ones, uh, whatever it is. We're having a new, we're changing the, the, the scheme. Very, very strange. You would have afraid uh, Aaron said, Old man, this right. Kiluni. Right. If he would have changed the miraculum, maybe they would have killed right. him. Yeah. So, the mice, sir. Usually in, in the Haftaras, around the tenth, I notice. This is over here, Sephardim and, 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 and uh, Chabad end. Yeah, generally Chabad's custom, interesting, even though Chabad is Ashkenazim, the Chabad generally Sorry. follows the Sephardim in Haftaris. Yeah. Mo- right. In most Haftaris. Yeah. Th- this one is an exception, by the way, where we, we really like the Ashkenazim, we read it to the end. Okay. <laughs> and you know why Sephardim stop in the middle? Because they want everybody to go home and continue by themselves. <laughs> okay. Peter Shashia now, I'm a double by Kosh based on the Shah Noshim. Fanenu Kim Loy, you mean with two bars of him, Hutta being Hashem, can you imagine she toy? Obazem over a time, Shamashi, his good name in Hosha, Shebra Oisim, Shainim, and Pak and Shlech and Noshim is ours. Hareza Gufa. The bottom of page 80, the paragraph of Gamze. Moshe felt that the very fact that I'm agreeing to the to Klai Yisrael to Samarag, that itself will pacify them and make them believe that everything's good. Ah, even, even when he saw they didn't change their mind, they still really wanted to send the spies. They weren't going to backtrack from sending it. Even though the Klai does not want to go back, after the hands, we can explain. That's why Moshe Dafke took kosher people. Rashi ben Yisrael, he took the leaders of Klai Yisrael, tzaddikim. Kiloshim Rashi, Parashat Dvarim, Rashi in Dvarim says, "Min habrurim shemichem from the cho- cho- the chosen the choicest amongst you, min hamesulatim shemichem the finest." Shesama chale Moshe relied on them. She yiros to where they will see, have the good eye and see the good of the land. The gam if you want eat to me pre or it's by days a is bad of the iso be you mochoshis Kalai so will see clearly Shaoch in toy for us my the land is tack a very very good land The other of the country is has a cat some lots and lots of will have a greater strength to go up there to so So we don't really have an issue. This is what we spoke outside We don't really have an issue with the fact that he sent the brag now, on the top of page 80, a second column, however, if we say that Moshe already realized that the people, they themselves, not only the Kla Yisrael are suspicious, but the people that he's sending to prove to Kla Yisrael that it's good, they themselves already changed their skin before they're leaving. There's no point in sending them. Why did he not? Try to stop them. Therefore, it seems to me, said the Rebbe, Sheshnei Hadvarim, the two things, the two psukim, the two concepts, Oishashok Sheimoy, that they were kosher. Betvilas Moshe, Koishach Matas Vragan, Hashem Davent for Yeshua, Meikara in Imsoisim Zalazek, they are not a contradiction at all. 
even though it seems to be their contradiction, and we have different methods of answering the timelines and this, and it doesn't really fit well, seems to be somehow we have to piece together that they could be kosher, and Moshe could still dab them for Yeshua. Somehow this, we have to see how there's no contradiction between these two. They should be kosher, the tzaddikim, and still, there's still room for Moshe to dab them for Yeshua. How could they coexist? How can we reconcile these two? Siv Gimel. Here comes the crux. We will understand this by first introducing the language that Rashi uses. Hashem should save you, save Yeshua, at Sas Raglan. They have advice in the Raglan. Well, that is the comment also later on we find. Gabi Kolev. It says regarding Kolev that Kolev went to go Davin at the Kivrei Ovis. It went to go Davin at the caver of the Amoris and Machpelah. So you need to have them lias batzosam. They should not get, not fall into the eights of advice of his friends. Seemingly, the language over here, eights of advice, seems to be a little out of place. Advice is not something negative. An eights of eights of people give an eights to anyone. An eights is not a bad thing. If it says eights of raw bad advice that we understand, that's what Taka says later, that there was an eights of raw. But Matzat Meraglin doesn't clearly say there was anything negative here. The Luchora Yemasim Yosef would have been more befitting. Lishdamish Beloshin Hamataeres is Chetom. We should use a language that more describes clearly their sin. Kmei Diba. The word Diba. Kmishnem Yitziu Diba Sora. It's like the bad, the bad the Loshin Hara. After the, the brackets, Oy Chet Amaraglin, or like the language used in, in other places, the sin of the Maraglin. Madhu Raka Rashi, why is Rashi always using in the beginning the Loshin Eitzadafka, the language advice? So, it's obviously, if you don't have anything to answer for it, you leave it. It's not such a big question. But it's a, little, it's a diuk. It's a, something to point out to. Yeshloimer. Whatever, so we could say, Shabadafke Nokat Rashi Loshin Zu. Rashi Dafke chose this language. Lahadgish the stress. Shein Kavanosi Loimer Shashemi Shi Mechet Abrad. Ki Adayin Oisa Shok Shein Maloi Valihe Shayach and Lechet Ashatibar. Rashi Dafke chose this word Eitzah because at this point in the beginning, there was no sinister thinking yet. There was no sinful thought yet about the Maragam. It was an issue of the advice. Hashem should save you from the advice of the Maragam. What was the... El Urak Me'atzatz Maragam, top of page 81. Lav davke eitzero. Shezen eshtchad eshrak achekach be'eitz halichoson. Halichoson be'eitzero. They went on the path be'eitzero with bad advice. Since we see that in the beginning, at that time before they left, they were good people, they had good intentions. So we must say the meaning of the word advice over here, the advice of Maragam, not only is it nothing bad, it means something good. Good advice. Why should it be bad? Now we're talking about they were good. They were good people. Their advice must have also been good advice. They had good ideas, good advice. It wasn't anything negative. Ah, why did he that Moshe daven for them? For Yeshua. The advice was good. What was wrong? Even though their intentions was for good. However, their advice, quote unquote, can bring to a mistake, the day tells, and which taka happened, it occurred that it was a mistake. Therefore, Davin, that they should be, Yeshua should be saved. At that point, it was totally good. They were totally good. They meant good, but they did. There was a change over here, and we're going to read about that more in Dalid. It was a change where they they had this advice, 
And not only bad advice, they had good advice, good ideas. But Moshe, and Moshe didn't think there was anything wrong. But Moshe felt that from this good advice, a step that they took away, and this good advice that they're taking, something can possibly come out from it. And therefore he davened for Yeshua. Not because in actuality they're bad, and he never would have let them go out. Just because there's a certain possibility that from this advice, something could eventually come out of a certain mistake. And therefore, Moshe already wants to be precautious and daven. But not that they were negative people, not that they had bad intentions, not at this time yet. What he saw could go equal either way? Well, if it was equal, you know, it would seem this probably was a, it was a smaller, the possibility was majority was that there was a certain possibility. Sivdal, beer to Ingen. The explanation of the concept. What was wrong with, what is the advice? We find the Meraglim's Shlichis, they were never called Meraglim, the beginning. In our Parsha, when they were sent out, they were never called Meraglim, spies. It was called Tur, or Yisuru, Tur, search, the cash of Jezu. Touristic. Tourist, it's true, I know. Yeah, exactly. Let's go to the, end, the, the third line from the bottom of the column. What's the difference between the languages here? The difference between the two languages. We do find the word Laragel in the Torah regarding Laragel that were sent to, to spy out the city of Yazer. But over here, we don't find the word Laragel before they were sent out. No, in, in no. the uh, Chumash sure. itself, Pashas Chukas. When Yeshua sent, he sent Meragli. But we find also in, 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 in Pashas Chukas, there was a city right. Yazir. Yosef also. Right. Right, right over here, we're going to be that. Lasser, Mitar, Be'ikirak, Pu'ulas, Hachipus, Vare'i, Abolfad. Top of page 81. The word Lasser means it's the act of searching and, and looking. When you name an hour, Pasik it means and our parasha means to see the land and its people. Give a report back. That's all. Check it out and give a report back. However, on the other hand, the language regal in the Torah, spying, you're searching for some hidden, you have a hidden uh, agenda here. Like when you spy to conquer an enemy's land. We find in the brothers. We have to look in the Torah itself for language in the Torah to understand the Basik. We find the Torah earlier. Yosef said to his brothers, You're spies. Lead us to the Amazonians. Yes, yes, you came to tour, right? You tell them you come to Lewis. You didn't come to. You came. You're spies. You have a sinister intent. You have an agenda. But that a general spying has to do with intelligence of the spy, his intelligence and how he chaps and thinks ways how he could spy. Based on his research and his wisdom, he thinks of a possible way how he can conquer the land. In our Parsha, before the Miraglim was sent out, they are never referred to as spies. Their mission was never to be spies. Kikolin in Ashlichus, Hayrak al Maisa. There wasn't anything about Chochmah here. They were not supposed to be using their brains and their Chochmah trying to figure out what's the best way to conquer. That Moshe will t- figure out how to conquer. You're supposed to come and give a report. That's all. Check the report. All right. No. Just give a report. Not too involved. Give a report. Go bring the food. Well, how did, you just do an act. Just do the Maisa. Do the action. Go check it out. Write a report back. Without what to do? It's not your business. Don't put it not your business to come and think and work it out. That like wasn't we, what we, we sent you for. Can. No analysis. No fake news. Oh. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> 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 we sabbat me so mashro. 
bring the fruit of the land, show everyone the fruit, but not to make conclusions and, and decide things. Not anything more than that. Not to think of different advice, what's the best man? And this, based on this on differentiation, we don't find the word meraglim or liragel or regal in this whole parsha before they sent out. We understand why Moshe davened for Yeshua. Moshe davened from the advice of meraglim. After Moshe hid Gishla Anoshim Shabbat, top of page 82, even though Moshe stressed to the, though, to the ones he was sending out that the purpose of their Shlichus is Rak lost his husband just to check out the land, I take me at right after he gave them the mission, this Asum Etzel, they came and they gathered themselves around him to talk to him, and they asked him all the different questions about their mission. He already felt a deviation. They already don't see themselves exactly the way I gave them positions to just check out the land, but they're already coming with all these inquisitive questions if they are in charge and they have to have advice as to how to conquer it. The Maragam didn't have bad intentions. They wanted to think what's the best way that Klai Yisrael could conquer the land. How to get into Yisrael to fill HaKadosh Baruch Hazaratzim and for whom Maisha wanted. It was all good. Everything was an Eitzah Toiva. It was good. But it was an Eitzah. It was already Eitzahs. Besides for just going, physically going and seeing the land, they see themselves as their mission is to get, figure out and draw conclusions. And know you give the Kivish to artists. Right when they started asking Moshe questions, how should we conquer the land, or what type of cities, what type of people, right after he pointed them, they, they had the first meeting. The first meeting back with Moshe, Moshe felt things are going amiss. But was there something wrong yet? There's nothing wrong. They're good people, they're tzaddikim. Everything still can go good. They made a little deviation, but it wasn't yet anything negative. Until, until Now we saw in the first time Rashi, you know, the Pasuk never referred to them as Miraglim. Rashi says, Me'atzas Miraglim. Shem should save you from the advice of the spies. The Torah never referred to them as spies here. Moshe mm-hmm. is referring to them now, saying, Save them from the Tzas Miraglim. Now they review themselves as spies. Shem should save you from this. You should stick clear to the mission. There was no sin in their advice. It was good advice. Good advice they were thinking of. Still in all. I didn't ask them to get involved. Okay, but there was nothing negative yet. He shouldn't even have that intention. He should stay um, trustworthy for the purpose of the mission. She said, Ach Barak, which is only lots of that's gonna have to check out the land. Without giving any advice. Because can Because it can bring to something negative. Very rare. It it wasn't negative enough to stop the mission that they, they saw already pointing to right. that they're not uh, really lost or they're really miraculous. Listen, you know, the question always remains self goes off, right? They were not already deviating, right? But it wasn't. We're bridging the gap much, much more. We're bridging the gap as much as we could yeah. dealing with these very difficult Rashis here. Right. Oh, you shade him, how you? On the other hand, he's davening for them. Okay. Yeah. Anyone reading the Rashis here? What's going on with Rashi? He suddenly forgot he wrote a line earlier. It's, it's very difficult to understand. Over here, it comes out that there was nothing negative yet. There was a certain deviation, but I can't say there was something ra over here. There was nothing ra. You see, if they were not asked question in the beginning, they will go and then they come back and tell Moshe Rabbeinu, you know, this, 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 this. That's a normal scenery of people going to the door and you see other things and you come back and you see you say what you saw. It's a normal. But they were thinking before. That's the problem. Right. But so it wasn't enough of a reason to, to battle the mission. 
Now, by the way, we find something uh, we also have to understand is that Moshe Davind. We have an issue here. Yishkolev, it says, Kolev went on the way, went off to Hebron. To Davin. To Davin. Davin. The Kamara tells us. To save from the advice of his Chavit. Mm-hmm. Also, over there, we don't find it says it was bad advice. Okay? Could be at that point it's already bad. But the Rebbe learns you don't have to say that even that, that Kolev, and he, Kolev did not realize yet that they already had bad intentions. He was still davening, save me from the advice of the Miraculum. Similar to what Yeshua, Moshe was davening for Yeshua. Kol was davening for himself by the by the Kivri Ovis, save me from the advice. It wasn't yet necessarily negative. Even they on their own, for Rashi it's clear that they already on the when they set out on the road already, they already had their before they even got to Eretz Canaan, they already had a Yelchovayu, which is clearly Mahali, Ma Biyosim Beitzurali Chosmitzel. They came, they went. So it's possible that even Kolev we could learn that Kolev realized it was negative and he was going. Or we could say that Kolev didn't know what they were up to. He picked up some advice. So it must have been so something was wrong. Seen that most of them have lost. Ah, that's good. Yeah. Nice shot. Yeah. Saying that Kolev saw that Yeshua was davening for for Moshe for for Yeshua, so he got concerned for himself also. He needed a bracha. Who did he ask Moshe davening for me too? Where was he Yeshua? There's another sikha song, I don't remember, that ever explains, uh, remember the answer, that ever asked this question about why Dafke Dab for Yeshua, what happened to Kolbe? What happened to the other Maragman, right? So, I mean, he had more... Of a, he, had, he had given up on them, he saw what they were. He couldn't dab for all of them. It looks like they have such an atiyah, it's not going to move. They don't want to go into the land. So, so why did he dab for Kolbe? So you have to understand. If he gave up, he has to bring them back. To okay. Up on them. No, no, I didn't give up totally. Pa- top of page uh, 82, the second column. Top of the column. Um, right after the brackets, the first paragraph. On the other hand, even though they had this advice that they were already spies, they changed, they deviated slightly from the mission. Muvan still, on the other hand, it's understood it wasn't enough of a reason to go and. Um, nullify their shlichis, their mission. Just a concern of Moshe. There's nothing negative now. There's no, it's just a concern that Moshe could have that maybe if they're starting to feel themselves the day as augurs, that they have opinions, maybe they're going to come. But it wasn't anything negative yet, that enough. It wasn't enough to mevat the shlichis. It wasn't enough. It was something to be concerned about but not enough to warrant, uh, 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 the percentage-wise wasn't enough to warrant, the concerns wasn't that serious to warrant calling back the whole mission. I have a question. All this thing that happened, he gave them all, he gave them instructions and everything. When they came back, why didn't he debrief them? It doesn't show anywhere in the Torah, nobody talks about that. They came with all these things, all of a sudden, he didn't rant to them, tell me what happened. They probably came back and they went straight to Moshe first. No, so that, that's he, one of the mistakes. If he mistake. briefed them, he would have told them, listen, what you're saying is not correct. As opposed to telling the whole audience. Yeah, right, he, he stood yeah. them up they weren't really listening to Moshe at that point. Tell everybody no, that what itself you saw. is a mistake. Don't that is a mistake that who sent you Moshe? They almost killed They almost killed the Moshe, not to make slow. Right. It's not so easy to cover up investigations, you know. People try, but you know. Yeah, but they don't have to release the report. They can keep the report classified, right? See, it's not so easy keeping reports classified, right? Because the so big. Ten people come out with a report, you know, and they just came back. Everyone, everyone wants to hear what happened. And, uh, okay, but it's a good question. Right? Why should they go to the people? They go to the leaders first, right? Right. Okay. But it could be that they allowed, Moshe didn't suspect that anything was wrong. He, he therefore allowed people to hear in. It was like it would be open. He assumed they're going to come a good, a good report. Transparency. Yeah, what was wrong? Why, why, why is there reason to, to, to be suspected there's going to be an issue? The, in general, we have to understand, we find in the Torah, Different situations where people that were tzaddikim sinned, raglim, koyrach. You know, 
when, when we find that people were kosher and suddenly they turned the skin, it's, it's, it, it sounds good, you know, they just changed, but it doesn't, it doesn't happen so easily. Naturally, people don't change overnight. We, always, we have to try to understand how the change happened. It's like explain the process. Okay. Where, how did the, 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 the thinking process change till people don't just don't wake up overnight and decide that uh, they're not, we're not doing with Meshagayim here. They wake up one, one night, they, they go to sleep one way, they wake up in the morning differently. Usually, pe- regular normal people don't do that. They gradually change. People are in a bad, a, a negative environment, have a bad neighbor and environment. So slowly, people change. It's not one minute. People don't themselves recognize that they change. It could be for the good or for the bad. People don't always realize how they're changing and evolving. It's a slow process. So we hear, we ice shock shade him. you suddenly they're ready. They're going out and having. So we need a little bit of just help understand what was the. Ch- how did we 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 jump over? So the Rebbe says, based on what I'm, he's explaining here, that there was an intermediate stage of help us out. It didn't just suddenly, oh, they were all kosher and suddenly went and had negative ideas. No. They started off slowly. They deviated slightly from the mission. Let's think about, they saw themselves as being responsible. I'm making sure it happened. That we have to spy, we have to think, we have to draw conclusions. That was never their mission. So they already deviated from the mission. Once you deviate from the mission, you think more, you think more, and then you think, is it possible, is it not possible? We're going to think logically, we, we, you know, and, 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 and there you can lead and go, and go away from the path. It's not just suddenly a jump. Now, furthermore, to explain furthermore, I'm just going to give a balpeh, the ending. Um, in general, the halacha is when a shliach in Torah, the concept of shlich is a proxy, pointing a proxy. If you point someone to be a proxy and he makes decisions that he was not allowed to make, so he's not your proxy, he's not your shliach anymore. He can't be a shliach. You told him to, to sell the item for, for $5, and he went and sold the item, your item for $3. The shlich is his battle. It has to cut, it got, it got, the, the sale is not a sale. The buyer has to give it back because the, he had no right to do it. He's not, he's not represent, you're represented, right? So over here, as soon as they deviated from the shlichis, that was an issue. Over here, it is even more to it. The Rebbe points out, Moshe Emes v'toyras Emes. Moshe was symbolic of Emes, the truth. Moshe was the man of truth. He was the epitome of truth. It wasn't over here only the fact that they did not they deviated from the Hishlichis of the Meragul. They changed their... That's by every person when he it makes a Shliach and he deviates, the rule is the Shlichis is bottom. So of course the Shlichis is bottom here. They're seeing themselves on their own. They have their own agendas. But it's even furthermore in this specific case of Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu's whole Nekud in life was Emes. Emes, Emes, Emes. Moshe Emes, Teras Emes. Oh, all the more so when it comes to Moshe Rabbeinu. As soon as they're deviating from the MS, what he said, what was not the truth, the full truth, what he said, that, that really brought a Yerida. It really brought a Yerida in them. Because you're supposed to be Maisha Shluchim. If you're Maisha Shluchim, all the more so, any Shriach has to follow the, the guidelines of the person who sent him. Especially a Shriach of Maisha's whole idea is MS. And now they want to be not amnestic and they have their own kavanas and agendas not keeping to the truth of what the mission is. The MS was that they deviated, the MS was that they It started off with deviation. And it led to they actually became the actual thing they said of Eitzara. But the beginning was they started off with the Eitzatoiva. Then it went. So that's why Oyzeshok Shalem Hayu fits with the fact that Moshe Kedam Vishua. And eights is an eights, and eights a toiva, it wasn't enough to battle. But that was already the beginning, the beginning of the end, like people say. That was the starting where they went off. If we could pinpoint to where the beginning point was, that was the beginning of the, of the fall. And specifically Yeshua and Kalev, who they were not persuaded to the advice of the Maraglim, even to stage one, they did not take that step away. They said, let's just do exactly what we were told. We're not going to, we're not chachamim. We're not chachamim. 
We just have to do what we're told. We're not supposed to be wise people. We just have to report exactly back. Dafke, they remained the Shluch of Amisha. And that itself, and that helped them that they did not stay, they stayed clear to the Shluchis. They came back and reported, Toi Va'aretz Moid Moid, the land is good. Don't be afraid of them. And that's why they were Zoycha to both go into Eretz Yisrael. And not only that, it says that they got their Yerusha. The Yerusha Maragum they got, and they took over their Shlichis. They became, instead of them, and took over everything. So here we see the whole incident. They knew it was a good man. Why don't they think Moshe Rabbeinu was a good man? Why don't they think Moshe Rabbeinu said, give me four from Eretz Yisrael, right? How come Yerusha and Kalev did not follow this Shlichis? Because they were being attacked. Oh, Gavaltika Kasha. Oh. Another sikh on the same. Follow, follow the shlichas. How could Kalavi Yeshua deviate from Moshe? Moshe to bring back fruits from the land. How could they bring back fruits? Maybe this, that was all part of the Manasa, part of the saying. You want to you wanna try it to dump? You try it to dump. But really doesn't want to try it. But they didn't, why didn't they go bring fruit? They were told to bring back fruit. How could maybe they, when he said to bring out fruit, he didn't really mean to bring back fruit. Maybe no. he meant to say. <laughs> That's part of the testing. Like, you want, you dare me to go? Go ahead, do whatever you want. Who, who said they weren't about? It wasn't. It wasn't. A, it they wasn't. Twelve people to carry the fruit. Point the, uh, those two didn't carry. Right. So right. Those carried the fruit, the grapes. What was the point? No. Of the eight and carried the f- grapes. Eight carried the cluster grapes. Exactly. One, one, uh, 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 one carried a fig. One carried a pomegranate. The two were left. Didn't carry. Omar says two reasons why they didn't carry. One explanation is because they are chashev. Since they were more chashev than anyone else, so it wasn't covered that they should carry. And the other one was because they realized what the Baragim were up to. So therefore, they wouldn't want to be involved. At all. But the old was Nasi'im. All the Baragim were yeah. the Rashi. Yeah, big pala. Yeah. By this is all a sikha according to Pshat and Rashi. Api Chassidus, the Alter Rebbe, explains in the Kotitoira, the famous explanation of the Alter Rebbe, that the Baragim, what, 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 where they went wrong was is they. They, they realize that coming to Eretz Yisrael, now the difficult terrain is ahead. Now we're no longer going to be living in the Midbar, everything's good. We have the clouds around us, the clothing is taken care of, there's the man coming at our doorstep. They want to leave. There's the slaw, everything is here. Beta Shomerya, Dayo Dayo Kedusha, there was Nisim in the flies. That's all going to finish. It's a new tukufa. They were scared of the new tukufa. But now we got to go into the land. We got to work with the land. All the miracles. Work for your panasa, the and they're worried that the ruchnius <laughs> was all going to be gone. They didn't see any ruchnius in Eretz Yisrael that we had, the and the mistake was that that's the mission. Yes, and, uh, you got to go into the, you got to go into the land, and that's the mission. That even over there in Eretz Yisrael, you should still, even with that struggle, with that test, you know that we say every morning in davening, we daven al tivenu de nisayin, Hashem should not bring us the challenge, but the challenge is before you. You have to pass the challenge. So when it's told to go into Eretz Yisrael, you have to go into Eretz Yisrael. You know, the Chanami, you're not supposed to put yourself in a situation, of chal- a challenging situation. You're not supposed to go on, on, on a place where it's not good to go. But if, if, if for some reason you happen to be there, you have to overcome the challenge. That's, that's the mission. The Meraglim, because they were tzaddikim, they didn't want to go. I'll share with you another part, it's not all about the Babach but other tzaddikim, the Ishbet said, the Meishi Layach said that the Meraglim heard, what was, why did the Meraglim not want to go to Yisrael? Because they heard that Eldad and Medad, they were Mesnav and Mach, they were, they were giving Nevuah, prophecy. What was their prophecy? They were saying that we're going to go into Eretz Yisrael, and Moish is going to stay here in the middle of Passaway. Mm-hmm. So Yeshua heard this, shocked. The saying such things that, that, that Moish is going to pass away, and, and we're going to go to Eretz Yisrael, leave Moish behind. He was shocked to hear about his Rebbe, such things. So right, uh, they, Moish, Yeshua right away came to Moish and said, take them away. So Moshe was sad. No, Moshe was calm. He wasn't mekane. He said, "Halavai, all the klai Yisrael should be nevi'im." Me to bechol. Enough. So, so the Maisa is the the, the Ishbitzer explains that he said that the, the Meraglim knew if they go to Eretz Yisrael, Moshe Rabbeinu is going to have to be nifter. They didn't want that their Rebbe should be nostalgic, so they wanted to stay in the midbar and stay with Moshe Rabbeinu. <laughs>